Have a little trouble in my hometown. Now sit down, nigga, before I put this glove on your ass. Of all the niggas in the world, it had to be that motherfucker. <laughs> Anime ain't gonna have no baby. <laughs> Cause I'm gonna kill the bitch. Yeah, as you can tell, I know this movie pretty well. Alright y'all, what's the deal? So today's a special video. This is the first time on my channel that I'm collabing with my main man, Blacktastic Media. We've been following each other for the past couple of years now. We've never collabed before. And it's a damn shame. I done collab with Q Reviews and Perez, Cool to the Fools, but Blacktastic I never collabed with. And that's crazy because, you know, we here. We here. We both love black exploitation. He reviewed Scream Black and Scream. And I was like, you know what, since we both love black exploitation, let's collab on some of these joints, man, and, and chop it up about it. So he's joining me on one of my favorite comedies of all time, even though this is not really black exploitation, but it was made in that era. But it's not black exploitation, at least to me it's not. And that is the classic Which Way Is Up, starring the iconic The Goat, Richard Pryor. He's the goat to me. Some say Carlin, some say Chappelle. Some say, uh, I don't know if anybody says Cosby anymore. Eddie, Eddie's a close second to me, but for me, it's always Richard. I love Richard Pryor. Grew up on him, grew up on his movies, on his comedy. I curse as much as I do because of Richard Pryor. I grew up in the Pryor, Eddie Murphy era, so that explains my potty mouth. I'm gonna let Blacktastic handle the the plot, the synopsis and all that, because I never, I never really been any good at that, so. I'm gonna let Blacktastic take it and give his two cents in the movie. So without further ado, I ain't gonna make y'all wait no longer. Here's Blacktastic Media on Which Way Is Up. What's up? It's your boy from Blacktastic Media. My man uh, Rashad G hit me up on Instagram. Yo, brother. Let's do a collab on Which Way Is Up, starring Richard Pryor, starring Richard Pryor, starring Richard Pryor. Yeah, I said it three times. Back in 1977, this movie dropped and Richard Pryor played three roles. Leroy, the poor orange picker, uh, Lennox Thomas, the preacher, and Pops. He played his own daddy in the movie. And basically, to the, the, the sum up the plot, they're poor, working in the orange field. This is when labor laws were getting involved and a union was being formed. And unto his own willing, he accidentally joined the labor union. Therefore, he lost his job being an orange picker. Money was getting tight. He had to move out of town because his old job was going to fuck him up. They didn't play that shit. It's like crossing the picket line. He moves to LA, he joins the forces with the union workers, ends up getting another job, but guess what? It's for the same company that fired him. So it's all bad. And while he's out there in LA, he beats a union worker, a beautiful red bone sister. God damn this motherfucker fine. But you know, he's married to Annie Mae, back in the home country girl who didn't like having sex a whole lot. You know, he kept trying and trying. Annie Mae was old fashioned, so he got him a brand new freak who gives it up at night. The plot thickens when he hears that uh, his wife is pregnant by the local preacher back at home. So he goes home to try to fix everything, even though he's the cause of everything. And basically, that is your plot summary all summed up right there easily my number one favorite richard Pryor movie of all time this dude it's, it's, he, he's he was the master of comedy the master of disguises the master of voices everything i do now comical wise is because of richard Pryor and eddie murphy <laughs> you know i love those brothers um, big part of my childhood and this movie man is so quotable it has lines that never get old man I love this movie easily my two favorite scenes in the whole movie is when he finds out that Annie Mae is pregnant and he comes and confronts her at the crib 
man. He's choking her and beating her up. And he finds out who is the father of their unborn child. And when she tells him, it was her spiritual counselor, um, <laughs> the Reverend Lennox Thomas, he goes, what? Of all the niggas in the world, that motherfucker? <laughs> and they commits to fighting. She throws a knife at him. He ducks. The door opens up. Pops is in there. Oh, shit. The bitch on. Go berserk. Close it. Close it. Close it. <laughs> Easily one of my funniest scenes in the movie. And the other one is when him and his buddy head over to the uh, church to go find out who this reverend is and what he's all about. You know, I recall my youngest junior here, Alfred, was young. <laughs> Brings a joy and laughter to my heart when I think of it. He used to pee on his brothers and sisters in bed when he was young. And he would come to me, Daddy, uh, is that sin? I go, no. Only if you did it on purpose. Now his sister, she sinned because she used to pee back on him, you know. Yo, man, I'm going to keep this brief. I'm going to let my man Rashad G give you all the details about the movie and everything but yeah this is definitely a classic never gets old i probably watch this movie like three four times a year this one and purple rain are two movies i watch like every three months at least four times a year but man rashad thanks for having me on this was a blast brother go ahead and bring it home and tell everybody the magic of this black movie that is so great and so beloved by the community. My man, I told you, bro, we here. I told you, we here. Yeah, your favorite scene was also my favorite scene. <laughs> but um, when uh, uh, Richard Pryor finds out that anime, or Leroy, his character's name is Leroy, anime that got pregnant on him with the goddamn preacher, also played by Richard Pryor, all right? And okay, let, let, let's acknowledge some shit here, okay? Because he's covered a lot of the story and all that, so let's just cover some other stuff here. This man played three characters, and I'm sure this has been done before probably, but not on this level. I think he was like one of the originators of this. If not the originator, he took that shit to another level where you believed he played each character separately and didn't require heavy makeup or prosthetics. It's just the way he played him, the way he portrayed him, the body language, the speech and everything, he was those characters. All right, even though you know it's Richard playing him, but you believed it for some reason. Especially when he played the father. I think the father was my favorite character and he was the funniest character. The preacher was too, but the father was funny the way he would curse him out when Richard would feel like his father couldn't hear him. You know, like when they were sitting at the dinner table and the father was talking shit like, yeah, somebody ate my piece of chicken and I hope you choke on the goddamn bone. You're gonna look over at anime and say, I hope our kids don't grow to be like him. It's okay, baby. I heard you. I heard both of you. I heard what you're saying now about what you're thinking. Nigga, you got, you got to get some pussy if you can have some kids. Shit, I'm not going to bottom out of mine. Ain't hey, a mama. <laughs> ah! Fucking hilarious. And I think where I laughed at the hardest was near the end where Leroy uh, blew the whistle on the preacher right, and exposed him to the whole church because the preacher was fucking everybody in the church, got everybody pregnant, you know what I mean? And he had that platinum healing glove <laughs> that was supposed to heal people. And Leroy called him out, and his church members chased him out the church. He's running away from them, and he gets hit by a damn, uh, what's it called? One of them uh, tour buses. Boom! You see the bus bounce up and down. Boom! And you hear the old homeless man talk about, damn, flat as day old beer. <laughs> but the funniest part of that is right before the bus hits him, right? He's a preacher now. He's, he's preaching the word of God and everything. And the last words he says before that bus hits him is, holy shit! <laughs> this movie has so many funny moments uh, another one that sticks out to me is when he tried to seduce the preacher's wife after he found out that his, his wife was fucking the, the preacher the reverend he started messing with the preacher's wife and at first she wasn't giving up the draw she was trying to be faithful and holy and the charm of Richard Pryor just, just charmed her drawers off and come to find out she was actually crazy a damn so after he hit it he tried to quit it and she wasn't having that <laughs> Hey, he tried to walk out, and he was like, uh, the door appears to be locked. <laughs> and she's like, wait a minute, you used me to get back? Nigga, don't you know I will kill you now? It also had a fucked up ending, because as funny as this movie is, 
it did have kind of a sad ending because at the end, um, he was trying to bounce, he was trying to balance two wives that, and bounce them at the same time. He was trying to balance two wives and ended up losing both of them. The the man he was trying to get back at ended up dying, left the the uh, the first lady a widow. The one wife takes his child away from him. He was left with nothing. And the white guy, the man who he was working for, who he sold out for, he had no respect for him. So he's like, fuck it, man. Look it. I guess hence the name which way is up. Only way I can go is up. So if you want to shoot me, you might as well shoot me in my ass because that's the last thing you're going to see in me, motherfucker. And then he did that classic George Jefferson walk, walking off into the sunset, lost everything, but he walked away with his pride, his dignity as a man, as a black man, black and strong, ain't selling out for the man. Yeah, that's some heavy shit there. That's deep in there, man. Yeah, that's deep. That's deep. So yeah, he's doing the George Jefferson walk, and then you hear the... This was made back in 77, so I think this is Richard at his prime. Now, in the 80s, a lot of people know him for, like, the toy and moving and critical condition, see no evil, hear no evil. By the 80s, his career really declined, especially when he did Superman 3. That was, like, really the beginning of the end for Richard. And the toy, somewhat of a guilty pleasure for me, but it has so many racial undertones where I feel guilty even watching it or liking it, you know what I mean? But the 80s, he, he really went downhill. I think his best movie in the 80s was Bustin' Loose, and that was in 81, but everything else, it went downhill from there. Which Way Is Up was his best movie, his best performance, playing three different characters, and he was just on point. He wasn't the scared Richard that we knew in the 80s. He wasn't the Richard that was like a bumbling idiot and always scared like, oh, 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 God, no. It got annoying after a while. He was sharp. He was quick with it. He was quick on his feet. You know what I'm saying? This was classic Richard Pryor reflecting on his comedy, on his comedy albums, his stand-up. And it's a shame because not a lot of people talk about which way is up. You know, when you talk about... Some of the best comedies ever. You hear the Trading Places and the Harlem Nights and, you know, most of the Eddie joints. But not a lot of respect is put on Richard Pryor's name. Put some respect on his man's name. If you have not seen this movie, and I'm sorry for the spoilers, but if you have not seen this movie, please watch it. I guarantee you will laugh. Yes, it's made in the 70s. It's a little dated. Some of the acting is a little suspect, especially from uh, the love interest, the light-skinned chick, the one that was from Sparkle. What's her name? Uh, Lynette McKee, I think her name is. I'm sorry, y'all. I know I can fuck some names up. But her acting was really suspect in this movie, which is weird because she was really good in Sparkle, his sister. And this was after Sparkle. And for some reason, her acting just stunk in this movie. She looked good now. You know, finer than frog hair, sweeter than bear meat. She looked good. But she just, uh, her acting was bad. And um, the anime played by, ooh, I just know her as Suge Avery. <laughs> I know her as Suge Avery from Color Purple, but, um, Listen here, y'all. This movie is funny as hell. I guarantee you will laugh, all right? And if you haven't seen it in a long time, watch it. I guarantee you will laugh. This is, like I said, it's top 10 funniest movie of all time. So I'm not going to hold much more of y'all time. I know y'all want to watch other YouTube videos and scroll and do other shit, you know. With these smartphones, I know our attention spans are that of a cocker spaniel. So without further ado, I'm going to grade this thing an A+. All right? Which way is up? A fucking plus. One of the funniest movies ever, Richard Pryor's best movie ever, and I wish we could have got this Richard in Harlem Nights, all right, because by the time Harlem Nights came, he was a shell of himself, and I'm like, that movie could have been like the fucking dream team of comedy if Richard was really on his shit, but it was still great, like, Harlem Nights is a classic, I need to review that later on, I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna talk about that later on, it's still a classic, but if we would have got the Which Way Is Up version of Richard, oh man, and one more shout out too before I wrap this video up, y'all. The director, Michael Schultz, put some respect on that man's name too. I looked up his filmography and I said, holy shit, did this guy direct some classics. Car Wash, Cooley High, Which Way Is Up, The Last Dragon, Crush Groove, Disorderlies, Living Large. Goddamn. <laughs> put some respect on his name too, man. Michael Schultz directed some of the, the illest classics. So anyways, y'all, that's my two cents on Which Way Is Up. I love this movie, man. What y'all think about the movie? Comment freely below. Let me know what you think about it. And uh, if you like and did the content, hit that like and subscribe notification bell in the corner. This is Rashad G signing out. See you in the next video.